Okie dokie. We're going. Oh, we're, we're going? Yeah, we're going. Are you to nervous to... that you're running the board? Exactly. I'm very nervous, actually. It's a lot of things going on. What's going on, everybody? Welcome to the Moot Points Podcast. We come at you today with fire and fury. Full of fire and fury. I sound like uh, someone from Game of Thrones right now, which is yeah, kind of sure. what I picture Trump doing when he threatens North Korea with fire and fury. Uh, welcome to the Moot Points Podcast, Brewvolution, Episode 2. Uh, I'm Brian Moot. Hosting this with me is, as always, my brother Patrick Moot, the... What? What? Author of Brewvolution. That's right. Um, now, if you don't know what Brewvolution is, it's a special series we do every other episode where uh, we found a script called Brewvolution that Pat wrote over 10 years ago um, about if the brew, if the revolution was started by drunk people in America and the whole thing is based around beer, though historically accurate in terms of characters, not so much in terms of their um, uh, how the story goes. Sure. Uh, before we get into that, though, um, let's talk about why we've been slacking on podcasts lately. Mm. Um, sl- we've been sl- sl- well, we have been, right? I know. No, I'm trying to figure it out in my own head, like, why have we been... I, what? We've been busy. Why have we been slacking? Been super busy. Uh, yeah, 100% busy. Super duper crazy busy. That's what... Uh, yeah. I need more volume of my headphones. Can you put, oh. give me some of my headphones here? Turn up my headphones. I got... I got Pat- oh, I'm sitting on Patrick's side of the studio today. Which headphones? Um, I'm letting Patrick run everything. Is that better? Um, that didn't do anything. I don't think that's my headphone jack. Um, there we go. That's a little bit better. All right, that's fine. <clears throat> so no, we've been busy, man. We had uh, we just kind of wrapped up the OTP tour for September. Uh, if you're not from Atlanta, it's uh, our tour we do outside the perimeter. If you're in Nashville, we're headed your way September 23rd. Two shows at City Winery. Yeah. Um, we've got the Strand in Marietta September 23rd. We or September twenty second, yeah, and then uh, the Foundry in Athens, uh, supposedly September sixth. Though my man Troy has been slow to reply to me. Um, what up, Troy? But uh, yeah, we've been dog? coordinating all those things. Um, also, I'm trying to move into a, my townhouse, which has been proven to be a little bit more of a challenge than I once thought. Because uh, last Friday, and by the way, thank you to everyone who came out to the City Winery in Atlanta. On Friday and sold that show out from a man, Jeff Dye, uh, BFF from day one back in comedy in L.A. We love you, Jeff Dye. We had a great time, man. It was a good good show. Davi was there. Uh, Davi did great. Andrew Merkel did awesome. He's an Atlanta comedian. Patrick Moot, solid set. That's me. Killed um, it. Wore my funny pants. Jeff did an hour and 40 minutes because that's what that he does. That's crazy. Um, yeah, he's like, I, I regret that. I should have told the sound guy not to tell him that he could do 90 minutes because... Listen, I know it was an uh, 8 o'clock show, and I know since we had the room all night, we have the room till 11. That's fine with me. But I don't like, I don't like comedy shows that go till... It was a long show. I don't, I don't want to be there till... It was great. Everybody like, I want to go hang out with people. Time. I don't want to be there till midnight, you know, just yeah. doing the post-show fracas. I want to get out there and hang out with everybody. Go get drinks, you know. We, we Ubered down there for a reason, and then, you know, uh, it, it was a waste of time because we were all sitting I in mean, there. I mean, we still left drunk. Like, either way. Yeah, but not as drunk there. as we could have been with people who were at the show. Sure. So I would, I think next time I do the City Winery, I'm going to bring in another friend from uh, L.A., another comedy friend that doesn't play any of the clubs out here, and I think I'm going to tell them, though that will never happen again because Jeff just... He just can't stop. Can't well, it's stop, funny because stop. before I was in the green room with him and the guy came in and Jeff was like, ask me how much time can I do? And I was like, I think you can do as much time as you want. There's not a show after us. We sold the place out. Like, and the guy yeah, came back show. and Jeff was like, how much time can I do? He's like, I don't know, like 60, uh, 90 minutes, 90, whatever. whatever. Jeff was like, nobody does 90 minutes, bro. Yeah, he did 88 or something. Yeah. 85. Yeah. Summer days. Anyways, we're sorry. We, uh, listen, our goal is to get two episodes up a week. It's going to be... We got some other projects coming up that we're going to start airing, too. Sure. Um, but I can't make any promises until we get relocated from my apartment to my townhouse. And my townhouse will have a studio built into mm-hmm. it. We're, we're turning the walk-in closets in the guest room. Here's the thing. My townhouse has a... A guest room that's huge. It's got a big guest room. It's, it's, the, the, guest it's the same room, size as a master bedroom. Yeah, the guest room could be the size. If you took out the walk-in closet, the giant walk-in closet, you could remodel that into two smaller rooms if you wanted to. Um, so I have a big guest room with an enormous walk-in closet. A walk-in closet so big, we are turning it into a radio studio. 
because I would like to start doing way far more podcasts and do stuff about news and politics. That's kind of where my heart is. Fire and fury. Fire, fury. Like the world has never seen, except if you lived in Japan during World War II. You saw some fire and fury. I know. That's, is that is. an inappropriate joke? There it is. I mean, come on. You don't say something it's like that. It's not inappropriate. And hey, I'm, I, this, is not, this is not a accurate joke. knock on Trump, but it is like a thing like, yeah, man, you're, you're threatening. Do you understand what nuclear war is? Like we're yeah. talking about... This is it's super ridiculous. serious. We're talking about eliminating entire cities with one bomb. It's like, like dragon stuff, man. So I get it. He needs to come strong with the, hey, North Korea, check yourself before you wreck yourself. The problem is this. If it starts popping off, and I just don't like the verbal threats. Oh, I guarantee you people in South Korea are just like, what are you doing? Yeah, yeah, what yeah are you People doing? are packing up. I mean, you have to be. If you're in Japan, I mean, I got to be honest. Right now, uh, I was reading today, I'm a little worried about your family on the West Coast. We, yeah. We're from Seattle. Seattle's we're from Whidbey like, Island. Seattle's like one of the first places that, I mean, one of the first places it, that they could. It's a realistic it. target. So it's kind of yeah. one of those situations where, though I do think, though I do think, Fresno. I do Fresno. think you need to come strong with your wording. But I think you need to do it in a diplomatic way because this ain't the playground, man. This ain't like you yeah. can't just start, you know, throwing punches and threatening people. You got to say, like, listen, we're not going to stand for this. Yeah. Save it for Twitter. I, th- I think the fire and fury stuff is like yeah, you riding uh, Daenerys little, Stormborn's dragon. It's a little hard to the paint. Um, he's coming strong. But, I mean, that's how he does things. Trump sure. does come strong. Uh, I just – well, anyways, we need to sidetrack ourselves. Yeah, yeah, we don't. Um, I mean, though, it would don't be give fun. me. You want to give me a start? You no, because you're you're, you you like to insult people. I'm yeah. just saying that I think, uh, I, though I know that that needs to be done. I think the wording could have been a little bit more. I don't know, diplomatic. Sure. Uh, but then again, you know, people who love Trump are probably like, yeah, buddy, yeah, whip out the blow Get torches, it. let's go. But I just think that we can't be messing around when it comes to nuclear war. And uh, I know nothing about nuclear war except. What happened it's like uh, super in World War II? Like, We're the only country to ever use a nuclear weapon, and we so destroyed then to say two like, entire like cities. Fire and fury, like you've never seen. It's like oh, we've hey, seen it, dude. I mean, it. not we. I haven't seen it, but no, someone but else there has. People have seen it. Anyway, so long story short, we were uh, we're putting in a radio studio um, in my apartment. So we'll be far more regular with this, yes. I promise. And, and this this weekend coming up, this weekend coming up, we are going to be relocating most of everything. Uh, I'll even bring the Jaeger machine up to the new house. <laughs> um, and then we're going to throw, we are going to throw a housewarming party and I'm not even kidding you. Podcast listeners are going to be invited. I don't know if I can invite everybody, but I know that we will do, we'll do some sort of a Twitter contest, fun Twitter contest, giveaway of some sort. And we'll just have a special, uh, podcast. Maybe we'll do like a stupid oh, live taping in the new house. <laughs> sure. Why not? I'm just going to have to chloroform everybody so they don't know where the address is. Sure. They can't just give it out to everybody. We can pick them up in a van like uh, like oh. they've been – yeah, like they're going to meet like El Chapo or Shuttle something Shuttle like you that. over with bags <laughs> like on your bags heads. Bags on your heads and you guys uh, – Well, I want to do something. Here's the thing. It's like I, I didn't even realize this. I was – so Bert uh, was like – slowly on the radio show, on the Bert show, has been giving out so many clues to where my house is that we've – Kristen was like, dude, you can literally – pinpoint where you live within about uh, i don't know uh like a quarter mile you know exactly where it is i even described there's two neighborhoods that it could be so you know where it is and i'm like i don't know what's wrong with that she's like well brian i don't know do you want people knowing exactly where you live i was like i don't care man i I kind of think of everybody who everybody who listens to the show and especially if you listen to the podcast i think you kind of like us enough i don't think you're gonna come boil a rabbit and if you're gonna boil anything boil the birds please god boil Boil the the birds birds boil boil the birds um, hey, they kind of shut up. They were squawking for a while out on the deck. Um, I mean, you can hear the them through the door. Anybody that you should be worried about figuring out where you They'll live find from out the where radio, live. they'll find out where you live. They'll go to the <laughs> radio station and follow you home. It's not that difficult. <laughs> they'll sneak. They'll, they'll break into your car. I leave my car unlocked most of the time. Anyway, they'll just be I in the back. I don't know much seat. about being a stalker, but I know that it just takes a little bit of work right. ethic and yeah, follow right. through, right. and you can so, do whatever. <laughs> stalkers <laughs> don't wait for Twitter invites. No, no, no. <laughs> like here, I'm finally here. I can kill Brian. <laughs> hell, of a, hell of a point. Come on, officer. He told me where he lived. Uh, he gave us a hashtag game to play. Of course, he wanted me to come over. And boil his birds and kill him and yeah. wear him as a skin. If you come suit. over and boil the birds, you're a hero. You are Actually, Pat would probably hero. give you. You probably give away the. I'll guest do another team. Twitter hashtag giveaway. <laughs> All right, so this is Brewvolution Chapter Two. Yep. And this is uh, pages thirteen to twenty-six. Yep. We're gonna be reading through these. We will be reading them in various oh. characters, and I will be. I don't know, busting Pat's balls on wh- why this the, is written like it is. What? 
When we finish this, there will only be 110 pages left. Right. Don't worry about it. Yeah, don't but worry don't, about it. Rest assured, the adventure. So let's catch people up real quick, Pat. Okay. Give up if you didn't listen to last episode, yes. which you need to. If you're listening to your first Brewvolution episode, mm-hmm. go to Brewvolution one. Um, real quick summation: Where are we at here? Uh, our our protagonist Patrick Thomas. Don't use words like that. Just say That's the, it, the good guy or the bad guy. The leader, the head, the main character. The good guy. Yeah, the good guy. The okay, main the character. good guy. So he, they're all good guys, Brian. It's about the American Revolution, okay? They're yeah, but not guys. the British people are the bad guys. Yeah, they are the bad guys. So okay, so, so the lead good guy. The lead good guy. Man, you're really awful at something. You're awful. Just at sum this thing up real quick. He, Where are we at here? He went back. He was out living with the the Native natives Americans. like Last of the Mohicans. Yes. Remember that? Yeah, yeah. yeah. we ripped okay. off. Na- <laughs> I ripped off the Last of the Mohicans. Yeah. Now he's back in Boston. You parodied it. His he w- he goes back to see his uncle who raised him, and he was he grew up. He owned a tavern, like a, a, a tavern. bar. Yeah, okay. So he goes back to find out that his uncle has been killed in the Boston. Boston massacre. massacre. Okay, and he, now they're at his, the spot where they're. He's trying to breathe life back into the bar, yes. right? And the brewmaster Finnegan, an Irish drunk, uh, is still living at the bar, Very but stretch. didn't want to open it stretch up. Stretch of a character. So right now there. they're. So now at this point, they have also had um, an Af- a well-educated African American man come back, and they found That's right. Out he's the co-owner. He now. is the co-owner of the bar because he was be- he's bequeathed. Yes, percentage from his of the bar. Slave owner. From, from his, his uh, former master? That yeah, sounds like a, such an awful thing to say. Know, but, but he's free in the script. He's yes. free in the script. The guy, the and dude, now he's a small business the dude owner. freed him, and in his will also left okay. him this half of the book. I'll accept that much. Yeah. Okay, so. now we pick back up with the narrator, and mm-hmm. Patrick promises this week to, to, to really take the narration voice serious. It's just like a big chunk of... I don't get into it, man. This is very... you got to set this thing up. So we're back. So we're in the tap room right now. Yep. Interior, the Thomas tap room. Fixing up monotone. I'm already blown. Why did you? How did you already blow it right Interior now? Interior Thomas tap room. You fixing wrote up this. Montage. Why come you can't read it? I mean, it's a montage, so it's like it's not. I was expecting like day or night or time, but it's a montage, so a it goes montage. over. Okay. Multiple. So it could be multiple yes. days. This is them fixing it up, this right? This is them fixing. This it. This is like yeah. when you play the '80s yeah. music. Sure. This like is the, the fun '80s. Yeah. All right. Yeah, yeah. Which you're gonna play right in post production. Sure. I'll best. put that in post. All right. Okay. Ready? Hit okay. the music. All right. Here we go. Patrick and Finnegan rule all the old furniture. Finnegan stands behind a farmhouse, smiling at a pile of rotten vegetables. Frederick paints while Patrick builds bar stools. Finnegan stokes a fire burning underneath a large copper kettle. Patrick and Frederick carry. Hey, Frederick, Frederick was the uh, a well-educated African American. Frederick former o- Omagato. That's it. Omagato. Oh <laughs> okay, I forgot his name. All right, Frederick Omagato. he's he's now the co-owner, former Omagato. slave, well-educated. Yes. Yes. Uh, Patrick and Frederick carry new furniture into the bar. Finnegan stirs boiling liquid in the copper kettle. Patrick hangs a picture of his uncle over the bar while Frederick speaks. Finnegan pours a bucket of cold water into the steaming kettle and tastes it and nods. Oh, and by the way, Patrick still ha- has yet to write a character of Brian into this yet. Killian has already been in there. But he died, like, immediately. Yeah, but still, okay. I'm still, still the Still a little bit. I still win. All right. I named, I named the main character after myself. Exterior, the Thomas Tapper, evening. Patrick stands on a ladder, putting the final coat of paint on a brand new sign that reads, The Thomas Tapper. He puts the brush to his side and admires the sign. Finnegan and Frederick stand on the ground below, looking up at him. Are we doing a, is it Patrick an Irish accent? No, he's regular. Oh, okay, good. Yeah. How does it look? That's me, Patrick. How does it look? Your uncle would be happy. That's Finnegan. Yep. Ah, oh, Patrick again. Of course he would. L- look at this place. Suddenly, the leg of the ladder snaps. Patrick starts to fall, but grabs onto the letter M in tap room and holds on tight. Help! I need help! Before Frederick and Finnegan can do... That's good That was pretty good. Did you hear that? Before Patrick and Finnegan... Uh, before Frederick and Finnegan can do anything, the letter M breaks loose from the sign and Patrick falls hard onto his back. Finnegan, Frederick stares up at the sign. Physical comedy, Pat. That's yeah, what that's that right. is. He falls down. Yeah. Oh, this is Frederick. Yep, that's you. The Thomas Taproom? Huh? Well, works for me. Me too. That's Finnegan. Yep. You really got to nail that Irish Me accent. too. All right, yeah, yeah, yeah. That's good. Otherwise, we got to identify me you. Me too. People are going to get confused. I know. All right, back to Frederick. Oh, just Frederick. wait. There are a bunch more characters coming okay. to this. You're gonna we got to introduce people. You're going to have your hands full. Okay, this is Frederick again. Yep. Let's get drunk. You're the boss. Finnegan and Frederick step over Patrick on their way back into the bar. Wait, they don't even help Patrick up? They just Hell walk across no. him. And you will notice that now it's called the Thomas Taproo. Taproo. They never changed the M. It sounds now French. Now on it's the Taproo. It sounds French like a tapas bar. Yep, that's right. Interior, the Thomas Taproo. Night. The inside of the formerly beat up building looks amazing. Everything is clean and bright and the declarations look great. Patrick stands behind the bar wiping it down with a rag. Frederick stares out the window onto the street. 
This is Frederick. I don't understand this. Where is everyone? And Patrick. Just relax, Frederick. We have to give it time. I think you were doing Frederick as Jerry Seinfeld, which I hated. Oh, that's right. Which I hated. No, no, we have to. But it does make it clear. I don't understand this. Where is everyone? (laughs) Just relax, Frederick. We have to give it time. Finnegan emerges from the back, pushing a huge wooden barrel. One of you lady friends want to give me a hand with this. Nailing it. I actually nailed that. The you did get it. Are you yeah. shocked? That you, I, I am. Would I, I, am. I was, actually, this I was this. checking our levels, too. This. Who wants to give me a hand with this? The door slams open and two menacing-looking figures stand in the doorway. The smaller of the two men is Joseph. Late 20s, a confident, good-looking man. He stands next to a larger, older man named Paul. So, for reference, these are... Joseph Warren and Paul Revere. Whoa. Hello. Historical Welcome accuracy. Welcome to history, mofos. So you're learning and being entertained. Yeah, you're learning. Patrick comes back in. Can we help you? Joseph approaches the bar. Yes, you can. Don't you think he should have a British accent? Uh, he's not British, no. He's, he's sure? actually a little flamboyant. That's because oh. he's young and flamboyant, like he's kind of so a little So get a little more man. flamboyant. Yeah. Yes, you can. I want to know, what the hell is a tap? So he's kind of a debutante. Now I'm doing, now I was just doing... He's kind of a debutante. Don't do Seinfeld. He's kind of a debutante. Yes, you can. I want to know, what the hell is a taproo, and what makes you think you can make up words in this part of town? Patrick and the others are silent. Joseph cracks a smile. Loosen up, man. I'm just messing with you. My name's Joseph, and this is my associate, Paul. When did you guys open up? Uh, just a few days ago. And what happened to, what's his name? The nice Irish guy that owned this place? Oh, Killian Thomas? He died. Oh no, that's terrible. Who are you? I'm his nephew, Patrick. He raised me here in Boston and left me the bar. Well, Patrick, I'm sorry to hear about your uncle, but I am glad you guys are back in business. So, you got any beer? We do. Is it good? Patrick looks at the two of the men and smiles. Oh, because their beer is good. Their beer is dope. They make it out of rotten fruit, so it makes it black out. Their beer out, is good. So it's like, it's got some t- a bite to it? It's like an IPA? Oh, it's got some serious Oh, it's a joke. foreshadow. It's what a do you double mean? IPA. Rotten fruit is a foreshadow? It's not a real thing, but I just decided if you make things out of rotten fruit that... Like and it was it's something fermented. that they would do. Like it's like a wine beer. Yeah, it's like nasty. Okay. It's like barley wine. I'll accept it. Interior, Thomas Taproo, later. All the men stand in the bar with their arms around each other, singing loudly and spilling beer all over themselves. You gentlemen are great. Let me ask you a question. Would you mind if Paul and a few, and I, and a few of our associates stop by here a couple times a week to drink and laugh? Are you kidding me? That's a great idea. All right, let me ask you another question. How do you gentlemen feel about the British? Just then, the door opens. How did you make... You just changed him to a flamboyant straight man to a flamboyant gay man. He's gay. Oh, he's gay. He's no, he's gay. not gay. He's actually going to be banging a bunch of chicks, but... Well, but he's like... But he's like... Quesh, he's that guy who like... I don't chicks really, think he's gay, and then they let him see, in I on the inside. I don't really and, know how to split the difference. It's either me or it's gay. Like, I, like and I'm already yeah. kind of a flamboyant you are a straight little man. I mean, some, yeah. I mean, that's pretty... You're right. Sure. You're kind of gay yeah, yeah. And then it's just going to sound like the gay-ish. same directions. gay gay yeah. On a spectrum, you like you, you hover Lulu, right around. I'm yeah. wearing Lululemon shorts right now and a workout t-shirt. <laughs> Those are my Lululemon shorts. And I didn't even go to the gym today. Me. All right, keep going. Okay. Um, oh, Abigail. Who's this Abigail Chestworth? Oh, she's Chestworth. A... Thank you. Why? Because she got big boobs. She's got big old boobs. Probably. Like who did you who did you envision when you envisioned this? Scar- I'm sorry, asking you questions. Scarlett Johansson. Sc- Scarjo. Oh, Scarjo. What about uh, what about uh, uh, Upton? What, Brooke, uh, Brooke, uh, sure, Kate Upton. Kate Upton. Of what about Kate Upton. Yes. Do it. Hey, who do you picture for Joseph, the flamboyant historical character? Jeremy Renner. <laughs> Jeremy Renner. <laughs> Still alive? Okay. Uh, all right, here we go. Just then the door opens. In the doorway stands Abigail Chestworth, 20s, a buxom, opinionated young woman. Well, hello, gentlemen. My name is Abigail Chestworth. She's from the South, but she's in the North now, I'm assuming. Here... How are the lot of you on this fine summer evening? Well, we're just fine, m'lady. Would you like to come and have a drink with us? No. In fact, I would not like to have a drink with you, sir. I'm here on business. Then she looks over at Patrick. I assume the man behind the bar is the owner of this fine establishment. Well, you assume correct. Frederick clears his throat. 
Oh, I see you blew it on this one. It says Patrick twice. Typo. See, you know that's I, Frederick next. Well, no, 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 it's not. Well, he's half the owner. Nah, no, well, half. Oh, it Frederick clears used. his voice. You know what? Also, I botched is that pretty soon Abigail's going to switch to me because otherwise you end up talking to yourself a bunch. That's fine. Yeah, I mean, yeah. we'll on. switch it back and forth. You can heckle me. Yeah. Oh yeah, fine, fine. Oh well, I'm half the owner. Yeah. <clears throat> Who owns the other half? That will be me. <laughs> I'm losing my. I'm losing my. Uh, I stopped. Oh, my you're life. right. Then you be Abigail. Yeah. Now, yeah, now okay, I'm I got it. But you're. She smiles sheepishly. So young. <laughs> she was gonna say black, and it would be weird. Oh, for him okay, to own yeah. a bar You're so young and uh, uh, awkward black. So young. But in the time, in the era of this piece, that that's it an accurate strange. thing for dumb, busty Abigail to say. Oh, she's not dumb. But she's she caught fiery and opinionated. Opinionated about race and yeah, racism well, and wh- who wait. and who should know bars. Wait. Just wait. She's she's very very she's very snarky. Okay, here we go. Uh, but right. you're you better turn so, the snark up a bit. But then. you're so young. <laughs> Look, gentlemen, I have an offer that you will not be able to refuse. I'm listening. I've come to offer you the superior service and incomparable company of a woman. A commodity that seems to be in very short supply in this particular part of town. Like there ain't no girls around, no one's no getting girls the bang on. All the men look at their at look at her a little confused. Yeah, because I'll, did she just offer him a gangbang? That's what she said, basically. I want to work for you. I'll be your barmaid. I've worked in similar establishments. I know what the job entails, and I'm great at it. All I ask is food, board, and an occasional loan to buy myself something fancy to wear. Um, I have no problem with that, Frederick. Can you cook? Just be- I mean, what's the deal with your skills? I improvised there. Yeah, thanks, Brian. Just because I am a woman does not mean that I am good in the kitchen. I thought you, of all people, would be a little more open-minded. I like her. One more thing. Oh, uh, what's that? Do you mind if I drink on the job? Patrick and Frederick look at each other at their beers and shrug. Uh, oh, man, I gotta do Irish. Finnegan it's, comes in. Oh, uh, yeah, is it hard? It's actually required. Oh, you did it. Excellent. I'll take you up on the drink now, kind sir. Interior, Thomas Taproo night. The Thomas Taproo is packed with intoxicated colonial men and women. Oh, you everyone, got it. Everyone is you in. You didn't say colonial. I didn't. I wrote it right. I think I must have Googled it at some point. Stop. Is this thing still recording? Oh, yeah. Okay, good. We're good. Sorry. <laughs> okay. We're interior, Thomas, tight ship here, interior Pat, Thomas Taproo night. The Thomas Taproo is packed with intoxicated colonial men and women. Everyone is in the loud, smoky building having a tremendous time. Patrick is behind the bar filling mugs and placing them onto the tray for Abigail. Frederick counts money and coins and puts them into a wooden box as Finnegan taps a nearby keg. A group of men, including Joseph and Paul, sit along the wall. Sit along the back wall, clearly engaged in a heated discussion. A young man named John. John Adams. Oh, another Late historical. Late 20s. Hey, write that down, everybody. Yeah, right. Another is historical. Is it John Adams? It might be John something else. I, um, a, you're, some, no, I think it is John Adams. John Quincy Adams. S- yes, John Quincy Adams. Because it it's not Sam yeah. Adams. Sam Adams is on the way. There's a Sam Adams for real? Hell yeah. I just thought he was a beer. Nope. Okay. <laughs> He's not just a beer. He loves beer, though. A young man named John leans over the bar talking to Patrick. He's dressed in loud, flashy clothes, obviously coming from a certain amount of wealth. Here comes John. That's you, right? No, that's you. Nah, it's not highlighted on my It's page. not highlighted? Damn. No, because I'll have to talk to myself this entire page. Did I blow it? Okay. Um, yeah, yeah. Okay, I got, it, I got it. Oh, then I switch over to Joseph on this one. You'll yeah. get my flamboyant, okay. Joseph. Okay. <clears throat> Please, Patrick, I implore you. What do you put in this fine ale? What is your secret? Oh, I'm sorry, buddy. I cannot say. Well played, sir. Keep that close to your heart. If I... I would only have stole it from you anyway. Seriously? Yes, most likely. Joseph, Paul, and Sam, 50s. A stern, gruff man with a ponytail approaches the bar. Ponytail? Who has a ponytail still? Around for my friends, I have a good feeling about tonight. Patrick quickly pours several mugs of beer and hands them out to the men. Oh, no, that's me. I'm Joseph now, dummy. Don't steal my lines. <laughs> Sorry. Around for my friends, and I have a good feeling about tonight. Patrick quickly pours several mugs of beer and hands them out to the men. I see that you have met our friend John. Yes, I was trying to get the man's secret recipe. Appears he will take it to the grave. Don't tell him a thing. That was Sam. He's an old, he's an old, old what? drunk. Ah! Don't tell him a thing! That's, that's it. Nailed that. John turns around and looks at Sam. Oh, hello, Sam. You're late! That's why I have you around. I assume you took care of everything. <laughs> yes, I of course did. 
You, I like you can't be character. serious. I told you a hundred times I'm not interested. Now, if you don't mind, I have to get back to work. Abigail picks up her tray of beers and walks back to the table. Clinton removes his... Did I skip a page? Well, you skipped a page, my dude. Yeah, I skipped a page. You skipped page 19. Let me see your 19. Uh, wait, no, you Hang picked... On. You picked, You missed uh, page 20. You missed 20. 20's right here. Oh, my God. I need 22 here. What? I got 20? I have another... You, oh, I got 20, 21. Yeah, I got all of them. 20, 21, and 22. You have both 20s? And 23 and 24. No, I do not have both 20s. I Pat, guess. you blew it. Shut up, bro. You blew it. Shut up, bro. Don't you edit this out. People need no. to understand when you're in the production seat, okay. what happens? Now I have it. This is what happened. Where did. Okay, what happened last? Wait. You got John at the top of the page, page 20. Okay, John at the top of the page. Yeah, page yeah John. 20. Okay, wait, let me put my headphones back on. Sorry, guys, we're back. Okay, oh, John, top of the page. Well, then, if you'll excuse me, John throws his hands in the air and saunters away from the bar. Sam watches him walk away in disgust. Pompous little man, woman! All right, he's not that drunk. Well, whatever, that's how he's going right. to be. All right, great. Sam turns towards the bar and looks at Patrick. You must be Patrick Thomas. I knew your Uncle Killian. He was a fine man. Oh, thank you. <laughs> That's Patrick, everybody. Now this is uh, Sam. Without any disrespect, however, I must say that your bruise has surely bested his. I'm hammered. I consider myself to be a bit of a connoisseur, so that should be taken as the most impressive compliment. I am most impressed. Abigail approaches from behind Patrick. I need a round of six for the table in the corner. Oh, no. What is he doing here? Patrick follows her gaze to the door. There are two men. There are two British soldiers standing behind Major Clinton Burlington. 30s. A total fairy and a jerk. Just inside the entrance. I don't know if that's PC, but... No, it's not. No. And then this not. guy's British, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Good luck. <laughs> yeah, no, I just was screaming as drunk Sam. Uh, all right, all right, all right. Hold on, hold on, hold on. Yeah, think about it. Think about Dave. Do you get oh, Dave? Uh, oh, yeah, yeah. I'll think about Dave, yeah. not the other human McDonald's. being. McDonald's. Uh, not about the other human being I just thought about. Yeah, no. Uh, um, Abigail, at last I have found you. Abigail rolls her eyes. <laughs> what do you want? I've, <laughs> I've come here to confess my undying love for you. It's you getting, can't be a little serious. Bit I've told you a hundred times I'm not interested. Now, if you don't mind, I have work to do. Abigail picks up her tray of beers. Abigail picks up her tray of beers and walks back. I can see Brian practicing I'm his British accent. <laughs> I am, this. man. Really funny. I'm mouthing it to myself. Oh, yeah. you okay, now I'm back to the pages. Okay. Stop you ruining the art of radio. You can't be serious. I've told you a hundred times, I'm not interested. Now, if you don't mind, I have work to do. Abigail picks up her tray of beers and walks back out to the tables. Clinton removes his hat, sets it down on the table, and crosses over to her. I'm trying to be a gentleman, but if you continue to belittle me in publicly like this, I'll have no choice but to demand your audience. Listen, what, the hell is it? what does that even mean? That's British talk. You demand know, your it's, audience? Yeah, it's impossible to understand these. Demand people. your attention? Demand your audience. That's the kind of shit that they say. Google that. Do you right? fancy the audience? I'm gonna Google oh, that. Oh, I gotta put demand fancy your there. audience. Do you that's, I'm trying to make him sound like a douche, Brian. That's yeah, that's but, the concept. But I don't even know if that's a. That's saying. what we're doing. Yeah, it uh, is. It is. It's it's the same. All right, can we keep going? Because she has that really hilarious line after that. All right, all right, all right. You want me to do that again? Yeah, do it again. I'll have no choice but to demand your audience. Listen, Snaggletooth, shove off. Whoa. Hot <laughs> fire. She knocked the British teeth, you mad monster. It's a low blow. Abigail pushes him gingerly out of the way and walks back towards the bar. The whole bar laughs. You have left me no choice, madam. Clinton crosses the bar. As he does, patrons strand up menacingly and get in his way. Excuse me, sir. Are you in charge here? Patrick shrugs and nods. I would like to request the company of your barmaid. Well, I mean, that's up to her. Uh, sounds to me like uh, she's not interested. Do you realize who you're talking to? As a commander of his majesty's royal army, I order you to release that woman to me. Uh, that's really not my decision to make, uh, uh, Abigail. Uh, would you like to speak with the man? I'd rather have the company of this smelly Irishman. Rude. To say Abigail about rests her hand on Finnegan's shoulder, who is asleep on the bar stool. He wakes up and falls to the floor. There you have it. Now, like the lady said, 
Shove off. Clinton scoffs angrily. You have not seen the last of me. I can picture uh, Hugh Grant for this character. Oh, sure. Hugh Grant, like sure. a total, like, pretentious douche. Going for, I, I'm, I'm going to pitch Tom Holland. He's got kind of a penis I'm face. Sick of that. Does Tom he kind of have a penis face, Hugh Grant? Uh, Hugh Grant? Like, if, like if Listen, your penis was a human, it would be Hugh Grant. He cheated on Elizabeth Hurley, so he's an idiot. I mean, you know what I'm saying, though? Like, he's yeah. got, like, a smudgy, like, 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 if, like a smarmy. Like, if like your if penis he, could be a man, it'd be Hugh Grant. If he wore pants that looked like balls, it would look, he'd just he's look like a, a walking look, dick. Like, he doesn't have, like, like you know dick. when you call someone a dick <laughs> face? <laughs> you call someone a dick face, it's like, uh, you don't mean it. No, you don't actually With Hugh Grant, you're like, no, no, I actually, you look like a human penis. You look like you have a dick for a face. Hashtag Hugh Grant dick face. Yeah. Hashtag Hugh Grant's dick face. At moot points. And his testicle pants. His ball knees. Oh, goodness. Okay. Uh, Finnegan stumbles up from the floor. Oh, that's original. Maybe you should shake your fist in the air and really drive home that you mean business. Good one, Finnegan. Nailed Clinton, it. Clinton Nailed it. turns on his heels and storms out of the bar. Patrons laugh and taunt him as he leaves. John quickly jumps up onto the bar, holds his mug in the air. In the honor of chivalry of our brave bartender on the night he told the Royal Navy to shove off, the next round is on me! Yay! The Everyone bar. in the bar. Cheers. Cheers. Let it be known, however, that I at no point did I... Okay, let me do that again. Oh, you, Abigail, he's back to Abigail. Let it be known, however, that at no point did I need that man's help. Everyone in the bar laughs. Abigail forces a smile to Patrick. Foreshadowing, they like each other. John comes in. Patrick, get up here and share a toast with me. Patrick reluctantly steps up onto the bar and stands next to John, who extends a drink out over the crowded room. To Patrick, the most popular bartender in town, especially when it comes to the ladies who come to the re- who come to the rescue for this young woman. Wait. Who came to the rescue for this y- Well, that's an awful sentence. Okay. Thank you. Especially when it comes to the ladies. Who came to the rescue for this young woman from the evil hand of British oppressors? Clunky, really bro. That clunky. is like all commas. There is no- drunk. <laughs> There's no- you can't blame it on the character. Yeah, you were drunk, drunk when you he's, wrote this. He's an alcoholic. All right. Probably. Everyone holds up their drink. To Patrick, the barmaid emancipator. I found my page 20. It was after you 22. need 23, dude. I know, I'm on 23. Okay, right. good. Everyone cheers and drinks. John lowers his mug and the crowd quiets down. Okay, though, on a more serious note, what our fine bartender just said is no more the perfect truth. If Abigail chooses not to go with this slimy, crumpet-munching bastard, she should not. Patrick, good shot at the Brits right there. Thank you, buddy. But it is her decision and her decision alone to make. No person should ever impose their will over her. And that, ladies and gentlemen, is the very definition of liberty. Here comes Sam, my favorite character. A very loose definition, in my opinion. It is based on Abigail. Abigail pushes Finnegan over in his bar stool. Patrick, please say a few words to the fine patrons of your bar. I think we switched back to you being Patrick, Pat. Am I Pat? You're Pat now. Well, I just want to say thank you for coming. We really appreciate all of our loyal customers. More, 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 more speech, more, more speech, more, more speech. Immediately, more people speech. follow John's lead and begin chanting. All right, uh, but I'm not very good at this stuff. You know, telling that dirty Brit to shove off felt pretty great. No offense, Abigail, but I might have done it. I might have done that more for me than her. Abigail rolls her eyes and the crowd laughs. <laughs> As you may... Do you want to take this? Uh, you want to take this monologue? Yeah, yeah, I got this one. Yeah. Patrick, he's loosening up now. Ah, as many of you may know, my uncle was shot dead in the streets a few years back. And since then, it seems to me that things continue to get worse. Personally, I don't think we should st- have to stand for it. The crowd cheers for Patrick getting fired. We shouldn't have to be treated like visitors in our own land. Paying taxes to some jerk in a wig that makes him look like an old lady. They have even started taxing tea. Can you believe that? I hate tea. But that's that's what makes me so angry. They think they they own us. 
They don't own us. We're all free to do with our lives what we please. And in my humble opinion, it's time that those wig-wearing fairies packed up their fish and chips and went back to England. You love fairy slams. I can't. Love I'm sorry. This fairies. was when it was okay. This was 10 years ago when it was okay to say uh, It was okay to say fairy 10 I, years I, ago? I don't know. Maybe. You're going to have to Google that I'm for Google historical that. I apologize to anyone who's okay. offended by that. I can't. There's no justification. I was I was young. Okay. Patrick. Turn, yeah, yeah, yeah. Get back. This, this is like getting, four years it's old. getting important now. This it is getting serious. serious. Patrick finishes triumphantly, but the room is silent. Patrick looks to the entrance and sees Clinton and the two officers back in the doorway. Dun, dun, dun. That's right. Now I'm Clinton again. I return to claim the cop that I left behind, and it's, I seem to have walked into the middle of an insurrection. Is that a word? Insurrection. Insurrection? Yeah, it means like an uprising. Like an insurgent? Yeah, thing? revolution. Insurgent. Okay. Yeah. Let me remind you all that of the punishment for treason is death by hanging. If I were you, I would keep that in mind. Then he looks at Patrick right in the eyes. Yep. I've got my eye on you, bartender. Good day. Clinton puts his hat back on his head and exits, followed by the soldier. Patrick appears rattled by the threat. John comes in. Don't worry, Don't worry that ninny man, let's drink! Everyone in the bar resumes drinking and having fun. Interior, the Thomas Taproo, later. The bar is almost empty except for a few still finishing their drinks and a couple passed out at tables. That's you, right? No, no, there's a 25. You have a... Son of a bitch. What's wrong with you? Do you not have the right pages? You were killing the flow of this. It wasn't my fault. The printer in the business center uh, really, really... You need really page able. 25, man. You got a little thing right here. I know, I know. Do you want me to read it? Sure. Well, you're still going to be screwed because you don't have the rest of the lines. You are Joseph Finnegan. Uh, oh Where'd 25 go? Is it the one to your left? Here, I'll just pass it. There we it. go. I got it. Good God. They're all mixed up now. Oh, no, yeah. wait. I got it. I got it. I got it. We're back. We're back. Failure. Top sorry, of the page. Sorry, sorry. And the nerve you had to be like, Brian, you idiot. Psst, psst, <laughs> it's your turn. Psst, hey. And you were like winking like people aren't listening to this in uh, car speakers I or bet headphones. They hear me psst, winking. Hey, okay. hey, Pat. Hey, Brian. Brian, don't worry. Okay, so right. they all left. Now they're all still drinking. Patrick, Frederick, and Finnegan stand behind the bar across from Paul, Joseph, and Sam. All of the men are intoxicated and speak loudly with slurred speech. <sighs> this is Patrick. Do you guys really think it's possible? I mean, seriously. I know we hate them, but what can we do? I don't know what we can do, but I know that what will happen if we do nothing. That's Joseph. What will happen? Joseph looks at Finnegan. Uh, nothing. Finnegan. All right. <laughs> Wait, you just make Finnegan like a surfer? All right. All right, man. All right. He's an Irish guy. All right. All right. All right. All right. All right. Finnegan collects everyone's mugs and fills them. Here's Sam. The problem is we just can't go and declare war against England. All hell will break loose. We need to force them into a position where they have to make a, no choice but to take ap- action. Oh, man, doing Jerry Seinfeld drunk is going to be fun. Yeah. Is everyone fucking distempered? What's the deal with that? You know what will happen if King George decides to send over his troops over here? We'll all be wearing powdered wigs. What's the deal with the wigs? That is why we prepared ourselves, and when the time is right, we'll trap them into getting into all our into an all-out war before they even know what's going on. The cen- the Continental Congress. You almost said cent- centennial. <laughs> Yeah, no, it's continental. continental. I spelled but, that right. But continental is not like colonies and stuff. Is yeah, there, but that was what it was called. The continental. Like they the called continent? themselves the Continental Congress. Okay. So that was I mean, all I'm those. Believe you, right there. Right? Sam Adams, Joseph oh, okay. Warren. Hey, easy, James, easy. That, that, Listen, that, man. I know you're mad that you lost some of your Paul pages. Revere. You lost some of your pages yeah, and took you a while to find them again. Stuff. But you can't get mad at me. All right. The Continental Congress has begun its meeting. They move slow. But if we can get the rest of the colonies to support us, the possibilities are endless. Patrick stands up and breaks the conversation. All right! That's it! Got to be enough talk of treason for one night. Take that back. What, you want me to do it again? Yeah, do it again. All right. All right, that's... All right. (laughs) This is such an awful line. All right, that's got to be enough talk of treason for one night. That's a good line. John emerges from the back, playing a violin. A young woman follows closely behind him. Both have messed up hair and flushed faces. 
The men begin to dance. Abigail stops cleaning. And somebody, Joseph, Sam Adams' phone goes off. <laughs> Bing! Sex message! <laughs> oh, here we go. The men begin to dance. Abigail stops cleaning a table in the middle of the room and runs over to Patrick. Come on, Patrick. You're dancing with me. And if you say no, I'll stab oh, you in the neck. Hold I know. On, I know. On, I know. Hold, I on, know. hold on. Hold on. I Pat- powered through Patrick, it. Patrick, how did you? Yeah, I know. I'm not only you power through that. We have people listening. How did you spell uh, say no? I mean, there is an N-O in it. It's just in between a K and a W. <laughs> I'll say no. I'll say no. I'll say no. I'll, say no. I'll say right, do that line again. Okay. Come on, Patrick. You're dancing with me. And if you say no, I'll stab you in the neck. Okay, but... She grabs his hand and pulls him into the middle of the room. John plays all kinds of great fiddle tunes, and the whole bar dances and parties happily. Patrick and Abigail begin to slow their dance and look at one another. Patrick stares at her for a few moments and smiles. She blushes and looks away. End of chapter Boom, two. Boom, end of chapter so two. So we're about to hit the revolution epicenter. It's coming. I, If I had to foreshadow and guess what's coming up next, I remember that Patrick said something hey. about taxing tea. hey. We don't like it. Listen, you know what's great? I and I love that line in it. I thought it was so funny. And again, my apologies for anything that's um in, seems okay, intolerant. He's and sorry like, that no. he said fairies like five times. I know. And he's sorry that he said that the one guy. Is I was juvenile, was. so I was making really bad. And I'm. You wrote this at what? Twenty two years old. I mean, twenty three, because I'm thirty three now. So it was ten years ago. Ten, I mean, I was twenty three years old. I mean, I was just coming out of high school. Like those. That was what I thought was funny. It, and I mean, it's pretty funny. It's it funnier is. that you did that, and then you spell no K N O W, and then yeah, you sure. sometimes you'll have <laughs> sometimes you'll have an entire paragraph that's all one sentence with a seventeen commas. It's all really funny. It's colonialists. Funny. I'm just hey, I'm teasing forward to episode sure. three, which will come uh, out next well, Monday. Well, episode Tuesday. three. What happens in episode three, and what's about to happen right now? So those of you who are not fil- familiar with screenwriting, is that at the end of if you're watching a movie, look at your clock at 30 minutes into the film, and something big will always happen. It's called The Inciting Incident, and it's really the end of the first act. It's where the thing happens, that thing that changes everything. A good example, the movie Blank Check. What do you think happens at 30 minutes into that movie? You write a blank check. He gets a blank check. Yeah. There it is. There okay. it is. And that, thus, gotcha, gotcha. your story okay. begins. Okay. So what screenwriting 101 here. Screenwriting 101. And then what happens at the 60-minute mark? 60 minute mark. Um, oh, they have a big decision to make, and then the resolution at the end. At the 60 minute mark, yeah, usually, I mean, so the first act usually goes 30 pages. The second act usually goes till about 90 pages, and then the last 30 is the conclusion. So within the second act, there will be several beats. Did you almost just throw up right now? I burped, and there was fluid in it. <laughs> That's what you're asking. Okay, so next episode, we have what's called the. Was this function? The inciting incident. Inciting incident. Yeah, the big thing. The thing that starts the Revolutionary War. Okay. The inciting incident of the Revolutionary War. I think it involves tea. That's coming up on the next episode of Brewvolution. Uh, next episode this week will be just us doing a regular podcast where we just yeah. talk a bunch of nonsense. And maybe have some guests on. Who knows? Yeah. It'll be a fun, uh, fun Max time. Be Ooh, had maybe by the all. Cooley Bros. If we're still here, depends on the fire and fury that yeah, we talked about earlier. Um, let's see. Do we have anything else to talk about? Not really. Patrick, you doing any comedy this Where weekend? Up? Uh, I'm doing, I don't know. No. I'm doing the Laughing Skull tonight. No, Wednesday night. Tonight. Hey, guys, come out to the uh, punchline. Yeah, come out to the punchline. That's right. And every Wednesday, Wednesday to be days. honest. We yeah. need to get more people to come out to the show. Yeah, it's a non-profit mean, night show. Patrick's been getting a lot better at stand-up. Yeah, and kinda. he has new jokes every time because he doesn't like the ones that he wrote every week. Yep, that's right. So he's They're getting all better. new jokes. Better by the second. Uh, and thank you for listening to Brewvolution. Tweet at us at Mood Points and at Pat Mood. And I promise you, production will get tighter on these shows, and we will have them more regularly Yes. Uh, as soon as we're done moving, and, and uh, we get rid of these. I would like now. to apologize one more time for being a juvenile uh, douche when I... What are you saying? Brian, don't cut me uh, up. <laughs> I'm trying to apologize to people for being okay, offensive. Okay, apologize again. Yeah, I'm sorry. You voted for Trump here. Oh, I got that last one. All right, thanks for listening. We'll uh, check us out same time, same place. Then you found us this time, next time, for the next episode. I'm tired, man. I'm sleep deprived. Very tired.
Celebrate Venus Fashion Week and discover the new fall fashion collection while saving at Venus. This weekend only, spend $100 and get an additional $15 off. Spend $150 and get $30 off. Just go to venus.com and use the promo code SWEATER to save today.